Well, uh, well, good evening, ladies, lasses, and lasses. Welcome to the click you look and smell absolutely amazing today. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Today we're gonna do something absolutely beautiful. We're gonna look into r slash chaotic good. Is that the one? Yeah, it is! Chaotic good! So imagine if your favorite anti-hero was turned into a collection of disembodied memes and just thrown around the internet. That is basically what this is. Enjoy some chaotic good. Mwah. Okay, this is pretty funny. Texas passed a law requiring schools to display any donated In God We Trust poster. They are breaking the law if someone donates a poster and they don't display it. So an activist is donating those posters, but in Arabic? <laughs> You should just do it in Swedish and they will think it's some kind of hidden satanic message. Just a bunch of dots over the O's and stuff. That must mean it's very uh, horrible. Oh no. Reminds me of that post when someone thought a Norwegian E uh, was, uh, was a uh, white supremacist symbol. <laughs> Beautiful. Cards Against Humanity is donating 100% of their profits to the natural network of abortion funds if the order comes from a state restricting abortion access. If someone selects, I didn't agree to this, an additional $5 donation is added to their cards. So you don't want us using your money to pay for abortions? You know, sometimes people have values imposed to them by bigger, more powerful entities, and they are forced to do things they don't want to do, like carry an unwanted pregnancy. For example, we just added an extra $5 donation to National Network of Abortion Funds to your cart! <laughs> <laughs> The irony is just staggering. I like this. It's so in your face. I wonder if this actually changes anyone's mind, but even if it doesn't, it's such a good trolling. I love it. Trolling for a good cause. That is just really chaotic good, isn't it? Assignment 8. Dear all, as you may have seen on the news, Ralph shot a man in the foot late this evening. As he had all the graded assignment at his apartment, and his apartment is currently a crime scene. Assignment 8. Uh, precipitation reactions will be dropped. Hopefully my headache goes away. Mighty, I shot someone in the foot and the professor was so freaking quick! <laughs> Some context. My TA, Ralph, shot his girlfriend Abusive X in the foot. Abusive X was also a sex offender. He shot him when X came to pick up stuff from girlfriend and tried to take some of Ralph's item as well. X is stable and alive in hospital. Didn't do a side of eight, so I'm very happy! <laughs> that, is okay. <laughs> that is beautiful. Oh my god. And for the students that didn't hand it in, heck yes. In 2018, a Russian hacker broke into 100,000 people's routers, but with good intentions. He didn't do any fraud, but only changed their settings so they don't get hacked in the future by others. Professionals have standards. That is so wholesome. Oh my god. You just go to hack someone's device to install better security on it, basically. Oh my god, this would be so funny. This gives me the same kind of vibe as, you know, scam scammers and stuff like that. It's so beautiful. I love it. Shout out to the US embassies in Austria, China, India, South Korea, who have directly ignored orders from Trump administration as flying the pride flag. They found really clever workarounds. As they were banned from flying the pride flag on the flagpole, they aren't ignoring orders, they are obeying the orders to the exact letter. Malicious compliance. Also in Mexico City, they couldn't fly the flag, but they didn't say anything about a picture of a flying flag. Look at Picture with this. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really malicious compliance. Oh, you said we can't have it on the flagpole. How about a whole building just turns into a rainbow? Hmm? How about that? This is some god tier chaotic lawful evil stuff. This feels like the kind of stuff in a D and D campaign. Imagine that you have a super homophobic like final boss. <laughs> this is kind of how you counter it, and then you just build up the population against them. It leads up to a final big battle. Maybe I should do this as a D and D adventure. That's a very thick concrete mailbox. Let's see you little punk smash my letterbox now. This reminds me of this guy who used to live on my dad's street. Every time it snowed, the snowplow would take out his mailbox, and only his mailbox. And just to be clear, it was done intentionally. No one knows why, but the driver of the snowplow would target his box and mow it down. He would call the DOT to complain, and would get an earful of excuses that amounted to Not our fault you have a wimpy mailbox. Fast forward to next winter. First decent snow starts falling, and every kid is hoping for a snow day. It was right around 4.30 a.m. that the whole neighborhood was woken up by this loud clang and the screech of tearing metal. My dad made it to the window first and started laughing his butt off. Sitting outside was one very total, almost ripped in half snowplow. And these weren't little pickup trucks with a blade on the front. We have these up in NY. That is a thick, chunky boy. What happened to that? 
Well, turns out over the summer, my dad's neighbor got himself a backhoe and sank a steel beam into the ground of his front yard. Then he covered it with a decorative wood sleeve and topped it off with a brand new mailbox. When the snowplow driver decided to mow it down, it was a base case of a movable object meets unstoppable force and a mailbox won. With the plow firmly impaled on the beam, it was very clear that the driver had gone out of his way to hit it. <laughs> Well, karma finally does come around, doesn't it? Why on earth would you keep doing it? Naturally, the DOT wasn't happy, and the neighbor's reply was simple. Not my fault, you have wimpy snowplow! They did try to sue him for the damages, but as he had gone to the town, got an approval for the post and his installation, and made sure everything was up to code, it was thrown out pretty quick. I mean, I suppose if it's on your property and they literally ram it when it's inside of your property, it cannot be your fault. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. And for anyone wondering about the driver, he was fine. His job and tidy whities not so much. <laughs> Why would you- what could possibly be the motivation? That is just so weirdly malicious, but I'm so glad the story had a satisfying ending. I would have loved to have been there to watch this. This sounds like a freaking movie plot. I also absolutely love the craftiness of it. Instead of like going, you know, legal routes or getting stuck in, you know, bureaucracies and trying to complain more, you know, trying to be a Karen about it and talk to the manager. It's like, no, no, I'm just gonna go the silent route. I'm just gonna reinforce the frick out of it, get everything approved, and then just have them ram into it and be like, yeah. Sucks to be you. <laughs> I love that. I love that attitude. Model and actress Anita Ekberg, after being followed and hounded by photographers, beat up one of them. When they threatened to call the cops, she retrieved a bow and arrow from her villa and shot another photographer. 1960. <laughs> This is how you deal with paparazzi. God freaking damn it. Have you seen the videos where they just hound celebrities? You could argue that, you know, oh, being a celebrity comes with its downsides, which like, sure, you can realistically say that, you know, being a celebrity comes with downsides. Saying that being a YouTuber, you're gonna get the occasional weirdo in your inbox. Like, it comes with the territory, but it still doesn't make it right. There's a difference about realistic expectations and like when someone is being a scumbag and it shouldn't be justified or excused for that matter, shoot them with bow and arrows. That's the solution to all the life problems. And then reinforce your mailbox. News! A pastor in Tennessee just said his church is no longer tax exempt after TikTok users submitted complaints to the IRS because he went on a rabid rant at his church saying, Democrats can't be Christian and yelled, you ain't seen an insurrection yet! Is this true? Can people report churches to the IRS? If so, I think that would be a great new TikTok challenge. Yes, you can report into the IRS using this form. For these doofus, I checked boxes 3 to 5. There's also form 211 I think you can use to claim a whistleblower reward. How cool is that? <laughs> That's amazing! Oh my god! Yeah, wouldn't it be amazing if we just started like good TikTok trends instead of this weird like, oh, what, what was it recent one? I saw like the devious lick, which is probably like six months outdated by now because I'm old and I, I don't care. But <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? You know, we have, you know, charity donation trends. We have like reporting scummy organization trends, all that kind of beautiful stuff. Wouldn't the world just be beautiful? But maybe that's not that fun, as fun as stealing like paper dispensers from school, I guess. It's not as cool. Why are rabbits so special? Yeah, soft. Teacher did one of those word cloud things with a virtual response thing for the question, what makes rabbit so special? I submitted the word soft 600 times. I need my word on the screen. They're really soft. You know what else is going to be really soft? The emotional support demon. Well, wow. Plushie coming out in hopefully near future. We're working on finalizing the design. I'll give you updates as it progresses. Don't miss it. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm going to cuddle it so bad. I'm going to buy way too many. I'm already running out of space in my closet after all the plushies I have. Please. I have issues, send, no, don't send help, I won't accept it. Joseph Menik, the last knight. He lived in Czechoslovakia until 1945 like a real knight, in a castle without electricity or cars. He even attacked German tanks on his horse in full armor during World War II. <laughs> oh my god, you've got the glorious beard going. I imagine, you know, horse and swords isn't gonna do too much against armored vehicles, but I imagine it stopped them for a brief second just for like, you know, the realization and like the reality of hit like what is that is that a knight in armor like ho ho hold on stop for a sec what <laughs> it's more about the shock factor than it is about effectiveness <laughs> absolutely amazing
It feels like something that you come from a movie. It feels like a Warhammer thing. You have these big, like, freaking tanks and vehicles and spaceships, and they come here. I have a big sledge, but donk. Absolutely beautiful vibes. So one of my gay friends got sent to conversion therapy. The thing is, the therapist was actually gay and helped my friend be himself. He helped over 50 gay slash trans kids be proud of himself. Freaking saint! That is so cool! Oh my god! Is this how we do it? This reminds me of that old story when they had, like, they were trying to hunt out, like, gay people in the Navy. So they had, like, undercover gay people that just turned out to only be gay people applying to it because, oh, gee, I get to act gay at the office? Well, gee, what, what, oh, how horrible. Sign me up. And <laughs> it feels like that kind of thing. Can we just make that the norm? Whenever something like this bogus garbage opens up, everyone just signs into it and everyone's just undercover and it's just a super wholesome camp just letting people be themselves. <sighs> Man, stuff like this brings me hope about humanity. This is like the chaotic, wholesome way of just like bashing down these horrible, phobic institutions. Man, it brings me a bit of hope for the future. So we got a couple of men in legal parking, not on our watch! <laughs> Did the city just hire a bunch of strongmen that just flip cars that park like douchebags? <laughs> That's amazing! I imagine the shock when you come back to your car and you're just laying upside down in the grass. There you go, we moved it for you. Manual towing service, no charge. R slash am I the butthole? Am I the butthole for manipulating my sister into med school? My sister is gifted and an amazing person. Throughout her life, she has said she wanted to be a doctor. She graduated from a prestigious college with a 4.00 GPA. However, my parents have always told her they want help with her company, and they put her to help them out. After graduating, their requests increased, to the point that she gave up studying for the MCAT to help them out. After a year, I saw that she was going nowhere. So I decided to help her out by telling her that I wanted to be a doctor and would like her to help me study for the MCAT. My sister, of course being the sweetheart that she is, decided to help me study. I started telling her how nervous I was and how I wish she could take it with me. She told me she couldn't because she needed to help my parents first. So I started fake crying and acting depressed. <laughs> Oh my god, she's really going the whole mile! Oh! She took pity on me and decided to take the exam with me. Moving forward, we both took the test. She got an amazing score of 525. She was super thrilled, and that day she told the whole family that she would apply to med school for the upcoming cycle. My dad questioned why she had taken the exam and mentioned how I inspired her and that she and I could apply to the same med schools to go together. <gasps> now my parents asked when I wanted to be a doctor and the truth was revealed. My parents lost it! saying I am ungrateful and that she needed to help out because they would put her and me through college. Which is not true because she got a full ride, they paid for me though. My sister also said I had manipulated her and she got mad. <laughs> my parents won't talk to me and my other family members agree. My sister did an up applying to med school. <laughs> You sacrificed your own, your own freaking family standing to, like, get your sister out of a, well, pretty, pretty, like, I'm not sure if manipulative is the right word, but a pretty strict family situation where they try to make her chose a path that maybe wasn't right for her. <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of chaotic wholesome, isn't it? My god. I'm a bit surprised that so many other family members agree so blindly. But maybe it's like one of those things where like, family is thicker than everything else, even though the kids don't want to work on the family business. Like, if the kids want to work on the family business, that's amazing. If they don't want to do it, maybe don't force them to. In my experience, when it comes to stuff like that, if they're not truly passionate about it, they're probably not going to keep it up, you know, indefinitely anyway. And then it's just a shame to have ruined other opportunities for something that wouldn't have lasted anyway, because no one wants to really run it. Uh, anyway. Man, you don't need a mohawk and spikes to be a punk. Being a punk is about breaking the rules. No feeding ducks. Feeding ducks? Punk your shit. Quack. Freak the system. Hell yeah, little dude. Feed the ducks today. Yeah. This is how we break the system down with a man. Feed the ducks, everyone. I want a duck. I, I have I have a kind of dream. You know, most people have dreams about like, oh no, the school is on fire. What if I save my crush and you know, they are in love with me forever. You know, those kind of bullshit normie dreams. My dream is about like just walking along the street and it's like, oh, what is this? An abandoned duckling slash duck egg. And I just have to care for it and become its best friend forever. Oh no, what a shame. That's my dream. That's my equivalent dream. 
Do not criticize me, I am not open to it. Thinking about the homeless man in Austin who I used to pay $15 to watch my car when I went out. And one night, I came back and all the cars around mine were broken into, except mine. And he was sitting on my hood and said, I ain't let him touch this one, Miss Kenzie. He's so wholesome, oh my, what? This is such a cute story. Oh my God, I hope we got to keep the car as well, you know, just to find the support. <laughs> My friend has been getting creeped on by one of her older co-workers. She's underage. Oh, this is so many levels of the. I asked if she had told anyone about this, and this ensued. Yep, I told a good bit of the guys at my work. One of them actually ran after a different creeper co-worker with a hatchet and said to tell him if he ever tried anything else. <laughs> oh, whoa, what a king. Right, king's name. You know him, right? Oh, of course. He's the one with the hatchet. Yay, of course. <laughs> Normalize chasing office creeps with hatchets. Isn't that a good law to put in the place? It's very pragmatic. A French environmentalist targets sites near Chulobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobob
When he cut the camera cords, he reported the deeds to the news himself, and then politicians pressured the local police force into arresting him. The local police and sheriff deputies actually support him for his actions, because the lights have been killing innocent people. During his most recent arrest, one of the sheriff's deputies actually offered to bail him out. When he got home again after these incidents, there was a surveillance camera planted at his house by the government to watch him. His reaction to being surveilled? He painted over the camera in America's flat out freaking ballsiest freakier to the government I've ever heard of! <laughs> oh, you want to survey up my home now? Nope! And it even gets crazier. After painting over the camera, suddenly this guy, his name is Steven, by the way, started getting attempts on his life. He reports that a car intentionally tried to hit him in a head-on collision. And after talking about the car to his neighbors, they confirmed that the car in question, or at least the one that was visibly identical, its occupants included, had been staking out his house. Someone was legitimately trying to murder him over his discovery and his actions. And as a final insult to injury, Ruth pointed out that it was vast majority of the cameras were found specifically in lower to middle class neighborhoods. As well, the victims of these rigged stop rides tried to go to the local news stations to talk about the deaths of their family members that occurred from the rigging. And the local station, News 12, never aired their interviews. Remember how I said that? After cutting the cables and calling the local news station, Ruth was arrested because of the pressure from politicians. Get this, News 12 is actually owned by Cablevision, who provides internet service for the cameras. This is like a big freaking spiderweb conspiracy. Be because the traffic cameras. Holy crap! Whereas Mr. Ruth was only trying to help people and save lives, he's been caught up in a full-blown freaking government conspiracy that's out of his blood. This guy isn't Robin Hood, he makes Robin Hood look like a chump. <laughs> oh my god! That's really what they mean with the saying only scraping the surface. It's like, oh, here's a little rigged camera that, you know, probably some local officer did just to cash in a bit of extra tickets. Like, pfft, yeah, yeah, get that out of here. And it just goes so deep to the point that they have government agents trying to literally kill him for fixing a stoplight. What a ballsy gentleman. My god. Penny Auction at Foreclosed Michigan Farm, 1936. At penny auctions, farmers would conspire to offer low bids. The final buyer would then return the property to the destitute farmer. Hangman nooses served as a warning to squirrely bidders. That is a nice, like, local conspiracy, isn't it? It's like, okay, we're, we have each other's backs, so if someone gets, like, you know, kicked out of their property, we'll just lowball the crap out of it and just give it back. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. Eight vehicles, ten people, one spot. These are the heroes we need at the beach on a steamy day. That is awesome. This is how you park mopeds and stuff. That is so good. You know, that group of friends could easily have taken ten spots, like you so often see stuff like that do. This is so wholesome. I love this. It's way more optimized than cars, even. This, this is truly the heroes we need at sunny days. India is saving endangered rhinos with one simple trick. Poachers hate them. Kassiringa can't pronounce that. Ruthless rangers have reduced rhino poaching by simply gunning down poachers in sight. It is labeled as one of those scummy commercials. Doctors hate this one trick, huh? The poachers hate this. Just poach the poachers. Isn't that beautiful? I'm a little bit disturbed about the thought of having, like, a poacher as the trophy on my wall or carpet, but... You know, it beats the alternative, doesn't it? That also sounds like a villain arc. It's- we have so many good villain arcs in this video. That's amazing, the poacher poacher, which turns out to be like a raging psychopath, but for like a good cause. That's also a good movie. Boss pinging me on weekends. My boss keeps pinging me on weekends. I used to follow up immediately, but his pings didn't stop. I finally downloaded his resume from LinkedIn and sent it to a ton of recruiters. My boss resigned last week. Just sharing, so you know there is ways to kick your boss out. That's kind of wholesome. Like, the boss is annoying, the boss probably got a better job too, you don't have to deal with them anymore, and you can just live your life in peace. Kind of just everyone wins. It's so sneaky, but everyone wins. That's pretty beautiful. Proceeds will benefit library programs. Okay, that's pretty good. <gasps> and someone just left a coin? Oh, that's like the dream of childhood. Oh, when you just walk up to machines and like, wait, it's already paid for? <gasps> oh. If you are reading this, I love you. <sighs> Internet trolling, but for good. A virtual army of Shiba Inu memes named after the North Atlantic Fellows Organization, NAFU, are combating Russian disinformation by flooding the replies of Russian officials. Also raised 50k to support Ukraine. <laughs> Posting for a good cause? Heck yes. POV, it's July the 4th week and the neighbors just finished their 11pm fireworks. <gasps> 
Is it about a puppy? Please tell me this is about a puppy. Is it about a puppy? Is it gonna be about a puppy? <gasps> what is that? What is that? Oh my god. Yes! Yes! Oh, it's a jumbler! Give it to the good boy. Give it. Yes! Yes! The revenge is upon us! <gasps> oh! Oh! The loudest, most obnoxious squeaking you will ever hear. Revenge of the poppers. Chaotic, wholesome, evil boy. Love this boy. A current mood. In 1908, Winston Churchill opposed giving women the right to vote. Irish suffragist Mary Maloney followed him around as he campaigned for parliament and clanged a large bell whenever he tried to speak. <laughs> that is so good. Yes. Oh, let's see if you like it when I do it to you. I wonder, did it change his mind? Does anyone actually know? Did it change his mind about, about the thing when he was just relentlessly trolled until he was forced to have a different stance? Did that actually happen? Governor Greg failed to secure this website, so now I own the domain and I've created this new website. Enjoy! <laughs> domain trolling, I swear to God. Healthcare worker distracts a protester from harassing a patient who is scheduled to enter the clinic. My friends, I pray, sir, you gotta repent, sir. You gotta Aww. repent, sir, for murdering babies. Oh, that's so annoying. Why? Because it's a sin before <sighs> God. Why? Well. <sighs> Stinky breath. Yeah, Why? that's pretty. That's pretty evil of you, sir. Yeah, I am. And, and I hope and pray that you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what you do to babies, huh? Yeah, I love it. You love it, huh? Yeah, I do. Okay, I hope that you come to Christ, sir. Oh, I'd never go to Christ. <laughs> He's just Christ. going full oh, demon role play. I love this. I don't listen to Christ. You, you will have a darkened heart, sir. I do have a darkened yeah. heart. Yeah. <laughs> you have a darkened heart. I do. I do very. very I guess that's the best way. Just like God agree with them. And here comes the patient, just like sneakily going in. Every day. All of the babies. The protester isn't even paying attention because he's so busy with the demonic doctor. I will. Keep keep tearing the babies apart. Their blood screams from the ground. Their blood screams from the ground. You are a murderer, sir. You are a murderer. shite. Like the guard just comes in and hey, the patient is ready. Oh, okay. It just turns around completely normally. Oh. I wonder. It looks like the protester is going away after that. I mean, I would also realize how embarrassing I am as a, as a collection of carbon atoms. <sighs> Fun history facts. One of the 31 people arrested at Stonewall on June 28, 1969 was American folk singer Dave Van Ronk, who was not at the Stonewall Inn at the time and was cis and straight as far as I'm aware. He's been eating dinner at a nearby restaurant when he noticed a riot happening, said, well, I suppose I should go see what the fuss is about, stepped outside and immediately started throwing bricks at cops. <laughs> It's like the equivalent of when you see a line to something and just be like, oh, there's a line. Must be a good thing. Better stand in the line. It's that kind of thing. But just like, j just this. LinkedIn finally added laughing emoji. <laughs> use it wisely. You can use it for unpaid internship posts. We are like a fan. Job offers. Underpaid job offers where recruiters claim to have attractive salaries. Selfie posts. Learn Python in four hours. SEOs with promise to rank your site number one on Google in one month. Become a font and developer in 15 days. How to become a data scientist in five easy ways. Fake struggle stories. Employees given entrepreneurship advice. This post, why not? Add yours in the comments. <laughs> it's all about the quirkiness. Oh, yes, indeed. I am a cis man who just downloaded a period tracking app because if there is anything I love, it's causing chaos. To clarify, this will likely do nothing to aid individuals who are subpoenaed themselves. The goal of this is to mess up data so that any law enforcement agency that purchases a database would have to waste significant resources in cleaning it up before using it. I cannot express how much I love the idea of a bunch of dudes downloading Flow and creating logins and entering complete nonsense for data. That's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good. You know, you know a decent strategy in life in general when you have like an adversary of some sort isn't necessarily to beat it with raw force it's just as long as you make it too expensive for them so they can't justify actually doing it they most of the time won't do it <laughs> that's beautiful i love that here's a bunch of stuff and vandalism is a crime which is ironically also vandalizing <laughs> I take ads. I take ads because I can any account I follow I own. No, I'm not giving you any of my sniped ads. Account hack tweets are bait bots to report them. A dream sexuality. <laughs> Maps aren't valid. Trans people posting. Oh, trans. Oh, that's so good. Oh my god, are you just sniping stuff that would otherwise be like trolling accounts that would just spread hateful stuff. This is also like like a nice kind of anti-hero arc, but for Twitter specifically. Call your grandma. Good vandalizing. I secretly planted a giant sequoia tree in my mayor's front yard. 
Hi, I am an arborist. That means I am a professional in the cultivation, management and study of trees. I love trees. I think they're some of the most beautiful, majestic, ancient living beings on our planet. Today, I'm here to tell you a story of death, new life and revenge. Three years ago today, the city council of Renodo Beach, California ordered the death of my 30-year-old pepper tree. Its roots had begun to penetrate the pavement in front of my house. The city noticed and issued the death warrant on my tree. They furthermore made me pay for the damages to the sidewalk and for the tree removal. I loved Clyde, that's the name of the tree I'm assuming. I'm beginning to get older, and planting something I know will live well beyond my lifetime was something very special. I took very good care of him. I drained his soil, gave him a crutch to lean on when he was a young lad. I watched him grow. Just as Clyde was becoming a strong, healthy individual, expanding his root system, developing a canopy, and making his own way in life. The mayor took it upon himself to uproot my beautiful child. 30 years! I grow some plants myself and I'm like really proud about like, oh, I have a, I have like a chili bush and I have an avocado tree that are like, what, two years old? Something like that. This is 15 times that age. Mayor, you killed my child. For this, you will pay. Two years and seven months ago, I secretly planted 45 California redwoods and 82 giant sequoias in various parks, yards and state properties around your city. Today, each of the root systems will be at least 30 feet in diameter and deeply embedded in the soil. You may have noticed trees growing in front of city council, or that new one that sprouted up in your backyard. That's a giant sequoia, and its growth will begin accelerating rapidly in the coming months. You killed Clyde, but I have replaced him with over a hundred living giants. And giant they will become. In a few years, they'll begin breaking the heights of 100 to 300 feet and live well beyond 2,000. 500 years. That's way longer ago than Jesus was born. To remove even one of them at this point will cost well over $1,500. And I'm stiffing you with the bill, just like you did to me three years ago today. Good day to you, sir. May you're said to be overrun by trees and may Clyde rest in peace. <laughs> this is a villain arc. This is a legit villain arc. But in the end of the movie, the villain turns out to be the good guy. <laughs> This is amazing! Can we make a movie about this? I love this! We can make it something like Woodman and the whole- and half the movie is just like cheap innuendos. Oh my god, it would be so good. Planting a tree here this morning, you might call it a bit of a morning wood. <laughs> Man, the movie would be so bad and so good at the same time. I am here for this. Some person in my online class posted this in the comments section of our online teacher's video. She really sucks at teaching. You guys are struggling to watch these videos, they're infinitely helpful. Better math video links! <laughs> what was it that we always watched when I went to uni? Khan Academy? God, that saved me so many times in, in like homeworks and for tests and stuff. Glorious things. Ah, oh, YouTube, thank you. A bank robber named Pretty Boy Floyd was known for destroying mortgage papers on heists, freeing hundreds of people from property debt. <laughs> if we're gonna rob a bank, better like even out the odds in, in you know, the greater karma way of things. Beautiful. It's like, hey, we stole the stuff from your bank account, but your mortgage is also gone, so you know... Hmm? Unsolicited feedback alert. I matched with you just to tell you that your first picture is absolutely great. You look super sharp, but your other pics are very odd. If you had just two or three pics similar to the first one, I think you get a lot of matches because you seriously look very handsome in that one. I appreciate the feedback. <laughs> Online dating going went much better. This this gives me way more hope for humanity than the usual stuff I see from like r slash tinder. Hootie howdy. I commute by bike every day in a city with no bike lanes. Prague. I drive recklessly. Respect no street law. Wear no helmet. Listen to music. Drunk 50% of the time. <laughs> Car drivers are terrified of me. They know well that if they kill me, it's their fault. It's going to be on them and I have nothing really to live for. Nothing to lose. I have only one goal. Make the traffic the most nightmare is possible for car drivers and hope they will stop driving and take the freaking metro just to avoid meeting me. <laughs> Forced them to take environmental options by fear. Apply to jobs that are not transparent with their hourly pay only to imply that it's good. Use fake name. Lie out of my butt in the application in order to ensure they call me. Get told they pay during the interview. They always aren't good. Ghost them. Post their hourly wage on Google reviews and put a one star if it's particularly shite. Frick you, be transparent, you stingy C words. But that is, oh yes, yes. Competitive salary. If it is so competitive, then be competitive. A French activist broke into the villa of Putin's daughter in France, changed the locks in the house, and invited refugees from Ukraine. <laughs> yes! I don't think anyone is gonna stop them, right? I don't think anyone would stop them. Boss text on your day off? Leave them unread. 
One of my union brothers replies with a PP pick if management takes him off the clock. Can that... Is that true? Could you get in more trouble for it? Like, you know, harassment stuff? But it's technically off hours. It's not like, you know, office harassment. She's so like, no, this is what I send to all my friends. You know, this is off hours, so it's just, <laughs> just very good friendships here. Well, Laris, Lars, and Lassos, I do hope you enjoyed this video and it inspired you to become a movie director and direct some very good villain arcs, where the villain is actually the good guy in the end. Well, I do hope an amazing rest of your day because you do deserve it, and I will see you in the very near future. Take care. Mwah. Oh, <laughs>